Good morning, friend. It is the annual Christmas candy extravaganza. I have six recipes out here we are gonna be making. Most of them are extremely easy, are gonna to come together in minutes. And some of them need a little bit more work, but I think they're all gonna be absolutely delicious. I've got all my goodies set up here and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna start with today is a three ingredient truffle. And this could not be more easy. And I really think it's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna make cookie, butter truffles. So I have some cookie butter here and we actually need to weigh this out. So, and we need it in a heat proof bowl because this is gonna come together in the microwave. You could use a double boiler, but we're gonna go ahead and make this right in the microwave and it's gonna come together so quickly. So I'm gonna put my bowl on my scale. We are gonna use some candy making equipment today so I can link the candy making equipment I have down below along with all these recipes. And we're just gonna get right into it. So the first thing we need today is 150 grams of cookie butter. I couldn't find this this morning and Josh was on his way to work and I was like, have you seen my cookie butter? He's like, I don't even know what that is. If you've never had this before, it is incredible. It is basically, so that is, A hundred and fifty grams. It's basically Biscoff cookies ground into a butter and it is so delicious. Now we need 300 grams of white chocolate and you could use white chocolate bars or chips. We'll call that close enough. Now we're going to melt this to make our truffle filling. So this is the inside of the truffle. I'm gonna microwave it, starting at about 20 second intervals, stir, microwave, stir, microwave, stir, until we get it all melty and delicious. Now, I have six recipes printed, but there are two more bonus recipes that I really wanna make that look really easy. So we'll see if we get to six recipes or eight recipes today. White chocolate melts quicker than dark chocolate. So you wanna keep a really close eye on this. I just took a little taste of the Biscoff cookie butter out of the jar and there is a reason I do not buy it on a regular basis because this stuff is dangerously good. The chocolate isn't fully melted yet, but there's still some residual heat. So I'm just gonna stir this until all the chocolate and the cookie butter is incorporated. I don't want to run the risk of burning this. So now it looks like all the chocolate is melted and we have one continuous homogeneous filling. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the refrigerator and our filling for our truffles is done. We still have to obviously shape them and decorate them, but I wanted to start with that because that's gonna take some time to chill. While that's chilling, we are gonna get going on probably what I'm the most excited about making and that's homemade chocolate turtles. Turtles are my absolute favorite candy. I feel like when it comes to candies and desserts, I've always been an old soul. I love chocolate turtles and it just reminds me of going to the beach <laughs> whenever we would go to the beach and go to candy stores I was weird as a kid and wanted to get chocolate turtles and I've never made them from scratch so we're going to do that today the first thing I need to do is preheat the oven to 350 we're going to make pecan turtles but you could make whatever kind of flavoring nut you want and I do need to weigh this out We need 260 grams of pecans, and I went ahead and bought chopped pecans just to save myself a step. Might actually, nope, not quite. I was gonna say it might be the whole bag, but not quite. I'm gonna go ahead and get these directly into the oven, and then we can start making our caramel sauce. And it looks like I didn't actually turn my oven on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on now. This recipe can be made in the microwave. A lot of the recipes that I found today can be either made on the stove or in the microwave. And I'm gonna make this one on the stove just because I think I'll be able to control the heat a little bit better. But it is kind of cool that it gives a microwave 
option. So I did go, and normally I make my own brown sugar, but because candy is pretty technical, I went ahead and bought light brown sugar and dark brown sugar for the different recipes we need, just so that I have more of a standard brown sugar and white sugar. So for the caramel portion of our truffles, not truffles, turtles, I was just thinking of the Biscoff cookies, I might want to decorate them with white chocolate and dark chocolate instead of the cookie bits. You'll see when we get there, but I've just been thinking a little bit. So I need 110 grams of light brown sugar. Now we need, first I need to take 18 grams of brown sugar out of here. Perfect. 100 grams of white sugar. Perfect. Now we need 175 grams of corn syrup. We have to be really careful to pour this accurately. The last thing we need is sweetened condensed milk, but we don't need the whole can, so we do need to weigh this out. I'm glad I double checked that because I just assumed we would need the whole can. We need 153 grams, which is about half this container. That is thick stuff. That's too much. That's 154, we'll go with that. This is my new candy thermometer, which I'm so excited about because it's easy to read. It's got all the measurements here and what the definition, so hardball, the temperatures in Celsius for oil and candy. I'm really excited about this. For years, if you've seen me make candy before, I've used just that old fashioned traditional candy thermometer and I never felt that it was fully accurate and I've used this a few times and I'm already really happy with it. I like that it's digital instead of an analog and I like that the numbers are huge. The recipe says you can pop this in the microwave until it reaches the proper temperature, which I think is 250 degrees. I'm gonna have to relook that up. But I thought I would have more control being able to do it on the stove top with my candy thermometer instead of in the microwave. So we're gonna let this melt and while this is melting, I'm not gonna step away and do too much because I don't want that to burn. I'm just gonna line this cookie sheet with some parchment paper because we're gonna make our little dollops of caramel candies on here. I've never made caramel using sweetened condensed milk before and so I'm excited to see how this turns out. When I was looking for truffle recipes, a lot of the recipes call for using craft caramels and I wanted to try to find one where I made the caramel from scratch. So I think that these are gonna turn out really well. They've got really good reviews, so I'm excited about this. Okay, so this is already coming up to a boil a little bit. I should probably check on my cons. Not quite toasted yet. The temperature just came up to 350. I'm gonna grab out my other ingredients we need to put in right at the end, which is a little bit of salt and vanilla. Now that we're at a good boil, I'm gonna go ahead and get my candy thermometer in there. And we're at 150, 160, 170, 80. Okay, so we're coming up to temperature pretty quick here. I'm gonna stop stirring it now at this point. Oh, I gotta check my, how hot I gotta get this to. We're at temperature already, so I'm gonna turn the stove off. No, we're not quite there yet, we're at 225. See that? Turn the stove back on. Okay, 236, so I'm gonna turn the stove off. I'm gonna add some salt, vanilla. I'm gonna grab the nuts out of the heater. I can do this without making a complete mess. Get our nuts in there. The stove is off, stir this together. 
And that is how easy it is to make the filling for the turtles. The recipe says we can make these as big or as little as we want and she normally gets 20. I'm not gonna make them very big because I'm gonna put these in Christmas gift boxes. So I want people to have a lot of different ones. So I just have my cookie scoop. And I think we're gonna get quite a few. With just one recipe's worth. The question is, are they gonna set up? That's always the biggest when it comes to caramels. They're probably even bigger than they need to be. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So pretty close. If these turn out, these might be my absolute favorite candies I've ever made. I love turtles and that was incredibly easy. So we're gonna set this and let these cool because obviously we have to cover them in chocolate. So now we're gonna move on to the next step. So we already have two candies already under our belt. I'm gonna go wash this actually because we are gonna need this for one of the recipes. So I'm gonna wash this out. I just turned off the oven because I don't think we're gonna need it for anything else. We're just gonna be using the microwave and the stove top for the rest of the recipes. So now we're gonna start on our peanut butter cups. Basically we're making Reese's peanut butter cups and we are going to start with measuring out butter and peanut butter. Now, when I started baking, I did not like the idea of a scale. I thought it was intimidating. I thought I didn't want anything to do with measuring. In the US, we use cups and it's not as accurate. And the more I'm getting comfortable using my scale, the more convenient I'm finding it actually than using cups because I can just measure everything right into one bowl. And so I don't want, if these recipes, since these recipes call for weights, I don't want that to be intimidating to you. If you start getting used to using a scale, you're actually gonna start liking it even more. It's just the investment of actually getting the scale that sometimes I think can be, you know, not all of us in the US have kitchen scales, but I would encourage you to get one and you can start making really delicious and easy candies and baked goods. So we need to start with 720 grams of peanut butter. This whole container is 450. I might cut this recipe in half because we're making so many things. Because I don't have 720 grams. So I need to cut that in half. This recipe makes big peanut butter cups and I'm gonna make mini ones. So we're gonna get plenty if we cut this recipe in half. So I need 360 grams of peanut butter. Perfect. Now we need 105 grams of butter. I don't know how much that is. Maybe this whole stick? Yep, I think so. That's a hundred and, sorry, if we're cutting it in half, we need 55 grams. Almost just messed that up. Right there's perfect. This recipe states to make the peanut butter filling portion in a double boiler on the stove, but I'm gonna do this one in the microwave because I don't need it to come to an exact temperature. So instead of getting a pot of boiling water out and all that stuff, I'm just gonna do it right in the microwave and be sure not to overcook it. But while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my powdered sugar, which we need equal parts powdered sugar to peanut butter. Right here. Now I make peanut butter cups, but normally I add Rice Krispies in them so they're kind of crunchy on the inside. So this recipe is more of a traditional kind of a copycat peanut butter cup recipe. Reese's peanut butter cup, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'm gonna zero this out and I need to redo my math <laughs> so that I make sure I do the correct amount. Normally when I cut things in half or double them, what I like to do is on my recipe, I like to actually write the measurements 
but I didn't do that today because there's only three ingredients. So we need 360 grams of powdered sugar. And we're gonna use the whisk attachment. I think that's what it says to do. It just says stand mixer. So I think my default when I use my stand mixer is my paddle attachment. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix this just a little bit to break up any clumps while we microwave our peanut butter. My peanut butter and butter are fully melted, so we're gonna get this into our stand mixer with the powdered sugar. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I think I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. I have scraped down the sides of the bowl a couple times. It did take a little bit to get it all incorporated, but now we've got one nice filling mixture here. So what I'm gonna do is get this onto this. This is a jelly pan with a piece of parchment. We're gonna turn this out. I think we're gonna be able to make plenty with half a half recipe here. And what I'm gonna do to flatten this out is use another piece of parchment paper. I think I'm gonna actually get a rolling pin out. like a pretty good thickness. Maybe a little thinner. I may have just tasted the filling. Not upset that I put a little bit of salt in that. That is delicious. I'm gonna get this into the freezer to cool quickly for us. And our caramels are setting. So they're not cool enough to cover with chocolate yet. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the refrigerator now just so they can fully harden up. But I think they're gonna set on us, which is fantastic. This next recipe I think is the last one where we are going to need the stove top. And we're gonna make some peppermint marshmallows. Marshmallows are so incredibly easy to make. And I think they come across as pretty impressive. And so for relatively ease, we can get a really impressive little thing to add into our candy box without a ton of work. It's very, very easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is rehydrate some gelatin. And how much gelatin do we need? This is unflavored gelatin. We need two and a half tablespoons or a half an ounce. So I need to change this to ounces. Right there, that's a half an ounce. The fun thing about making marshmallows is you can change the flavor profile really easily. We are going to make peppermint ones, but you could just make plain vanilla ones if you want. So to that beef gelatin, I just added a half a cup of water. Now we're gonna weigh out the rest of our ingredients, which for this recipe is actually not using the scale. The only thing we needed the scale for was the gelatin. Now we need two cups of white sugar, three quarters of a cup of corn syrup, a quarter cup of water, While our sugar is cooking and coming up to temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the pan that we are going to put our marshmallows in. This is my new favorite trick. You all taught me this. Take your parchment paper, crinkle it up, and then it's gonna stay in place. And it just makes it a lot easier. 
I also am going to grease this with just a little bit of cooking spray so that the marshmallows release really easily. So now that we have our pan prepared, we can turn our attention back to our sugar mixture. And the reason my sugar is a little bit dark and not completely stark white is because it is an organic sugar. And so it does have a little bit of its molasses still left in it. It's not brown sugar, but it does have a little bit of its color left into it and it works just fine to make marshmallows. Once our sugar has come up to temperature, we're gonna go ahead and flavor it with salt, peppermint extract, and a little bit of vanilla extract, and that is our flavoring. You could use just vanilla extract if you wanted just vanilla. You could use almond extract, lemon extract. There's a lot of different things you can do with marshmallows, and I like making them because you can flavor them for the holidays. Now we're gonna mix it into our gelatin. And that is how easy it is to make marshmallows. So you can use different flavorings instead of, oh no, ah. instead of water. I made pumpkin marshmallows and instead of using water to reconstitute the gelatin, I used pumpkin puree. And I think you could even do like strawberry or all sorts of, you could get really creative with the marshmallows. But today is peppermint. And we're gonna get this in here and then we're gonna decorate the top. I normally just leave it plain, but I thought because it's Christmas, we're gonna decorate the top a little bit. You could let this beat for a little bit longer and it would be a little bit stiffer, but because I am gonna put a swirl on the top, I didn't want it to be quite as firm. For the decoration, I have some green food coloring and a skewer that I'm gonna throw away when we're done. I'm just going to swirl. I think I'm gonna do some drops. And then it'll look worse before it looks better. And then I'm gonna go ahead and And there are our Christmas peppermint marshmallows. Now marshmallows do have to cool overnight before you can cut into them. So I'm just gonna set them up here. And luckily for us, yesterday I made a batch of these marshmallows. So when we make our little boxes today so that tomorrow I can go drop them off at my loved one's homes, I will have marshmallows that we can cut into so I can show you what they look like. And then tomorrow I'll just cut those as well. So now we are gonna clean this and I think let's make our popcorn balls. Now popcorn balls are something I've never made before and I've always wanted to make them and today is the day. I'm rereading my recipes and the butter toffee pretzels actually need to bake for an hour. So let's get those going and we need to preheat the oven to 200 degrees. I didn't realize that they had to bake. So while the pretzels are baking, we can make our popcorn balls. We do have a little bit of prep we have to do for the toffee pretzels. I think this sounds absolutely incredible and really easy to do, but I couldn't find the toffee morsels. So I just bought some Heath bars and I'm just gonna take a minute and I'm gonna actually chop these up. And I also couldn't find at the store yesterday, which was really weird, twisted pretzels. Where the twisted pretzels are supposed to be at the store, it was completely empty. So I just got these square ones and I thought, we can substitute these instead. And this is a 16 ounce bag, which is exactly what the recipe calls for. So we're gonna get these pretzels onto this baking sheet. And then I just put parchment paper down so it's gonna be easier to clean. And then I'm gonna take a second and chop up these Heath bars. And then we do need to make a caramel sauce in this pot on the stove. So now we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna measure out our caramel fixings. The first thing we need is one stick of butter cubed. Now we need one cup of brown sugar lightly packed and we need light brown sugar. So I'm gonna use this, let's see. I'd say that's lightly packed. 
makes me a little nervous when it's not super exact now that I'm getting used to using the measurements. And we need a quarter cup of corn syrup. Now we're gonna have this come to a boil and boil for five minutes while we stir constantly. I did grab out the vanilla because we're gonna need that. And then once it boils for five minutes, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of baking soda. So I wanna go ahead and get this pre-measured out too so that when we're ready for it, we have it already out and pre-measured. So I'm just gonna set that there. We don't need to add any salt or anything because we're going to put this over pretzels which are already pretty heavily salted. I'm gonna consider this a boil, so I'm gonna set my timer now for five minutes. Since I had to sit here for five minutes and stir this mixture, I went ahead and I've got my recipes in hand and I'm just reviewing my recipes while this cooks and I stir. Our toffee has boiled for five minutes, so we're gonna add vanilla and our baking soda. I'm gonna stir this together. And now we're gonna pour this over. I think it's gonna be easier to stir it. So now we're supposed to put this in the oven. It's not fully mixed yet, but I think that the oven portion is really how we're gonna get this fully incorporated. So now we're gonna put this in the oven for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And in 15 minutes, we'll stir it and we'll do that every 15 minutes for the next hour. This next recipe we are going to be making is the popcorn balls, which I've never made a popcorn ball before and I've always wanted to. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. You can either pop the popcorn yourself or the recipe says you can use some skinny pop, which is what I decided to do, just to save myself an extra step. And funny thing enough, this recipe, the caramel portion is the exact same ratio as what we just did, except we're gonna cook this in the microwave. And I'm thinking that, well, I'm gonna count this out first. We need 10 to 12 cups of popcorn popped this is just a salted popcorn. This is a two cup measure, so that's two. It smells good. Four, six, eight, 10, and then that's probably good. So for the caramel, so we're gonna set that over there. This is gonna go over here, so it's the exact same ratio. So it's one cup of lightly brown sugar, lightly packed brown sugar, which we're gonna make this in the microwave. I think that the, I'm worried that the pretzels, I cooked, I cooked it for five minutes, but because I didn't cook it to a particular temperature, it could have got hotter. And the higher you cook your sugar or your caramel, the harder it gets when it cools. And so I'm curious to see how it reacts in the oven as it warms and as I stir it, because I wasn't able to stir it completely evenly over everything. So now we're gonna put a quarter cup of, let me double, double check. One cup of light brown sugar, packed. This one does say packed. The last one said lightly packed. So I didn't read that fully. So let me add a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Quarter cup of corn syrup. This also calls for baking soda that we'll add in at the very end. Do you make popcorn balls at Christmas? To me, I associate popcorn balls with Christmas even though my mom's never made them, I've never made them. I just feel like traditionally people make popcorn balls at Christmas, don't they? One stick of butter. We're gonna get this in the microwave and we're gonna cook this in the microwave. So it says to cook this caramel for one minute, stir it, and then cook it for an additional two minutes, stir it, and then cook it for an additional minute. 
And then if you want it crunchy caramel, then you're gonna cook it for an additional minute. Now, caramel corn does remind me of Christmas. They're, the mall we used to go to growing up, my dad loves caramel corn. And so at Christmas time, we would go Christmas shopping at the mall and we would always get caramel corn, but it wasn't caramel balls, it was just caramel corn. Ah, I'm dripping caramel everywhere. Ah! So here's our caramel. We're gonna add baking soda, vanilla. We're gonna mix this together. Okay, I really like the consistency of this caramel better than the last caramel we just made. Oh my goodness, that's hot. Okay, don't touch the bottom of that. Now we're gonna pour this onto our popcorn. This was so incredibly easy. And it smells like Christmas to me. It's funny how smells can really bring that back. Okay, now is it hot still? Because I need to get in there with my hands. Now that these have cooled a little bit, I can actually get them into balls. So I can I get them into, that's the key I think. They just have to cool a little bit. We've made all of the components for all of the candies. Now we need to assemble and decorate them. So we've got our peanut butter cup filling here. We're gonna make them in mini muffin tins. And then we also, our turtles have completely set up. So now we're kind of in the, moving from kind of the caramel phase of this cooking day to the chocolate phase. So here are our turtles, they've set up beautifully. I'm just gonna set those there for now. We've got our truffles here. And I think I'm gonna move on to the peanut butter cups next, which means we actually need to melt chocolate first. We need chocolate for kind of all of these different goodies. And I have to decide what kind of chocolate I want for the peanut butter cups and for the turtles. Do I wanna do, we're not tempering this chocolate. That is above my pay grade. I've never tempered chocolate before. Maybe one day I'll wanna learn, but for now I, it's not something I really want to tackle, especially today. So I think what I'm gonna do is use semi-sweet because all these caramel and peanut butter components are relatively sweet. You could use milk chocolate, you could use dark chocolate. Now we need a lot of chocolate for all these different things. So I'm just gonna put a lot of cho chocolate in here and I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave just like we've done before. While that's melting, I'm gonna start lining my tin with some paper cups. I do have another one of these if we need more. The original recipe said it would make about 32 inch. Oh, there's my chocolate, perfect timing. And because I'm making these smaller than the original recipe, I'm doing about one inch. We'll probably still get about 30. I just wanna see if this fits in there. Yes, perfect. I think I'm gonna pop this in the freezer. I had put it in the refrigerator, but it's getting a little soft. The chocolate is melted now, and a trick to get shinier chocolate without tempering it is to add a little bit of coconut oil. So I'm gonna add some of that. It's not an exact science. Chocolatiers would probably tell you different, but this is what's worked for me in the past, so that's what we're gonna do. That coconut oil just makes the chocolate a little shinier. Now I have a Ziploc bag here too because I'm gonna use that to pipe this chocolate. I'm just gonna let the residual heat from the chocolate melt that coconut oil. You can see how it's already shinier. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. So we'll probably have to melt more chocolate, but we're gonna start with that. Okay, I think we're gonna start with these. 
because I want them to harden before we can actually, oh, okay. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop these in the fridge. Maybe freezer, I'm gonna pop them in the freezer. Now there's two things we could do with these. We could dip them fully in chocolate, or we could just dip the tops in chocolate. I have to decide what I wanna do. Like we could just cover the top in chocolate, which I think is more traditional to not have it fully encased. Or we could totally encase them. What should I do? I think I'm just gonna put it on the top. I'm waiting for the lower layer of the peanut butter cups to harden before we can cut out the peanut butter and put it on top. So I need to melt more chocolate, but I might as well not melt the chocolate until that happens. And so what we're gonna do now is roll out our Biscoff or our cookie truffles. So I did take these out of the refrigerator, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes ago because they were so incredibly hard that I didn't think I would be able to roll them out. So now they are kind of a little bit more malleable. I'm gonna go ahead and roll them out. They smell incredible. I can see some white chocolate actually that hasn't fully melted, so that's something to note. That I should have had that white chocolate melt just a little bit more. These are like white truffles. So I don't know, it was maybe only like a two years ago or three years ago that I realized that chocolate truffles or in this case, cookie truffles, are named after the mushroom truffle. And that's why they don't have to be perfectly round. They can be more natural looking because if you've ever seen a mushroom truffle, they're not perfectly round. I had the pleasure of purchasing some white Oregon truffles from someone on Facebook Marketplace when Josh and I were first married and I made a pasta dish out of it. It was kind of an interesting situation. I was just on Facebook Marketplace and I saw someone selling white truffles. And so I contacted the guy and met him in a parking lot and I bought white truffles off of him. I would love to get into mushroom hunting. I think that, that would be so incredibly fun. Living in the Pacific Northwest, there definitely is good mushroom hunting around here, but something that I would wanna do with an expert. I don't, wouldn't wanna just run out there by myself and pretend like I knew what I was doing, like I do in the kitchen on a daily basis. The stakes are a little bit higher. My peanut butter filling has now set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these out and getting these into our little cups. I on accident smushed a couple of them when I was getting them out of, or putting them into the freezer, so they hardened that way, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think this is gonna be the perfect thickness for these little peanut butter cups. You can kind of get creative when it comes to making these. You could make these in a regular muffin tin and use regular muffin size liners and make bigger Reese's peanut butter cups. But I wanted mini because we're gonna be packaging up these with all sorts of different goodies and so I kind of wanted bite size and that's what I was going for. I've also seen people online where they make a giant one so you would use instead of using muffin tins you would use a pie tin, line your pie tin, put chocolate on the bottom and then put a big slab of the peanut butter and chocolate on the top and that's another option as well if you wanted it to be like a centerpiece for a party or something like that and then cut it into chunks I think that that would be fun too 
but this is what we're doing today. I did end up needing to get out my other tray because this made a lot of peanut butter cups. And you could also get creative and use milk chocolate, white chocolate. You could probably even use different types of butters. So instead of using peanut butter, you could probably use almond butter or sun butter or cashew butter, hazelnut butter, whatever you find to be your favorite butter and get really creative with these. I just went pretty simple and straightforward and followed the recipe. I do think it would be good next time to make it with milk chocolate as well. Here's the other tray because this did make quite a bit of peanut butter cups. These were so good. After I topped them with the chocolate, I popped them back in the freezer so that they could harden up. Everything has been made. All we need to do is cut our marshmallows. I think they turned out so cute and they smell absolutely incredible. I've never done a color on the top like that before and I think that's really, really beautiful. The best way to cut marshmallows is to actually use powdered sugar. So it doesn't stick together. I'm just gonna cut, coat that cut side with powdered sugar. Cause that's where it's gonna be sticky. Now these are pretty thick marshmallows. I could have probably put them in a nine by 13 and they would have been a little bit thinner. That's the cool thing about marshmallows is you can really cut them and shape them however you want. If you have silicone molds, you could make them into any kind of shape. You could actually use cookie cutters too. I like how the green kind of is in the inside too. I think that's really pretty. This summer, I think what I might try to do is make homemade marshmallows and homemade graham crackers and get good quality chocolate and do an elevated s'more. The peanut butter cups are nice and cooled now so we can get them out of the little muffin tin. I really like making them like this in the cups. That's a lot easier than having to hand dip each one. Friend, we did it. We've got our caramel popcorn balls. So excited to make those for the first time. I'm also so excited about the turtles. My goodness, they are incredible and the turtles are going to be for absolute darn sure a new Christmas tradition. I'm excited to give my dad the popcorn balls. Hopefully they bring back good memories of shopping, Christmas shopping at the mall. And then we've got our peanut butter cups. I love these. They are so convenient and easy to make compared to the way I've made them in the past. Absolutely adorable and cute. And you could, you know, get really creative. You could use whatever kind of nut butter you want and whatever kind of chocolate you want in that. Got our marshmallows, our, oh my goodness, these cookie truffles are divine. And our pretzels, they're not the prettiest thing. I think I boiled them a little too hard. They taste delicious. They just, I need to try them again. And it could be the fact also that I use different pretzels too. One thing to note, the caramel from the turtles sticks on the tissue paper. I have these little silicone things. They're, well, not silicone. I don't know what you would call these but they're little slips that when you make caramels, you use to wrap the caramels in. I bought them because I was gonna make caramels, but then I decided this is what I was gonna make instead. And so I think what I'm gonna do is still use them. I'm gonna put my little turtle on there like that so that it doesn't stick onto my tissue paper. You know, I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the caramel corn ball. Perfect. On both my husband's side of the family and my side of the family, we have paired back a lot on gift giving. And so this is kind of my gift to my loved ones. I love spending time in the kitchen experimenting with new recipes, sometimes doing tried and true recipes. And I love going and driving around town and dropping these off at my loved ones' houses. 
I found these boxes at Dollar Tree and I thought that they were absolutely perfect for my annual candy box. Sometimes it's candies and cookies, sometimes it's just candies, sometimes it's just cookies, and I'm adding about two to three to four of each item in each box so that each person can get a little sample of everything. I know most of my loved ones aren't gonna like every single thing in here, and so I wanna be able to give a few of each one so they can try them and hopefully enjoy at least a few of each of these candies we had fun making today together. Everything is all packaged up and ready to be dropped off tomorrow. I had so much fun, friend, with you in the kitchen today as we baked up baking, candy making, as we made a bunch of candies from scratch and just had a lot of fun experimenting. So thank you for being here. Don't forget, if you want any of these recipes, they will be linked down in the description box. And I hope you are having a fantastic holiday season. I know that I've been enjoying kind of the slower pace that comes with this time of year. Even though it's kind of hectic, busy, a lot of baking, a lot of cooking, but it's fun and I really enjoy it. And I greatly appreciate the fact that you take time out of your day to spend time with me in the kitchen. So I am gonna to go tomorrow and drop these off and I cannot wait. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you wanna watch a couple of my other baking videos, I can put some other holiday baking videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.